hello General Grievous. Hello taped up sunroof. Oh boy. I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We are here in the General Grievous ZJ. We got the headliner off and we are finally gonna do the sunroof. Oh my goodness, it's been about three years. Oh man, guys, this sucks. Sunroof is broken in the open position. Oh no! This is terrible. I do not have time for this. I've had this thing sealed off with flex seal tape. It'll be three years and a couple months, and I think it's finally time we do this. So, uh, obviously, step one, as you can see from the intro, <laughs> take off the headliner. And now is also a great time to redo your saggy headliner. So, uh, we got that done. This is off. Let's go start taking this apart. Looks like we got this little bracket for the overhead console holding this thing in. That's really close fit, so I'm gonna take this out. One, two, three little hex head bolts there. That'll come out. We also have one, two, there's one, two, and then one, two, three fasteners. So we got those about 10 or so fasteners. We also have a little wire running along here. Looks like a couple clips we will have to disconnect. I don't want to rip anything. We got some overhead wiring on this side. I don't know if that is zip tied to it. I'll just go around and make sure everything's clear. But also we have four drain tubes on the corner. And what's interesting is it looks like they run the drain tubes through the body before they actually paint this thing. So there's paint on here. That's interesting. All right, so we'll disconnect this and uh, start dropping her down. Beautiful blue skies today. So if we mess this up, we won't get rain in it. And that's a good thing. So yeah, I'm gonna start taking this out. Nice glass. All right, these top three up here on this little bracket appear to be eight millimeter. And all these wide fasteners, these appear to be 11 millimeter. Well, they don't appear to be, they are. There we go. <laughs> Let gravity do the work for you. All right, I'm going to snip off these hose clamps. And I'm just gonna pull off these drain tubes. Oh. Remind me to blast out these hoses with some air. Let's clip this little guy here. Oh, yeah. This thing is only being held up by the strength of the flick sealed tape. So when you take this off, you might want to leave a couple screws up there so it doesn't come crashing down on your head. Well, there she blows. <sighs> this thing is just a mess. I'll see if I can extract the glass. We'll save the glass. Uh, maybe the frame itself. The tracks, I think, are completely shot. I know there's plastic in there somewhere that was just shredded. So, yeah, we'll do our best to save the components. But I do believe the motor is good, so I could reuse that if I have to. All right, here is the new one. This is filthy. It has been sitting in my backyard in the storage tent 
for the better part of two years. Um, not as long as the uh, window has been broken, but this is nasty. Um, yeah, I guess I'll clean it up and plug it in for a test fit. Oh, I figured that the best way to test it was to just plug it in where it's supposed to be. And to do that, I might as well just install it. So here's the part where you probably want to get a buddy. Because this thing is heavy. Since I'm working alone, and I got no buddies around right now, this is a damn shame. I'm thinking of an alternative solution. I'm just gonna have to use my head. No pun intended. I lost my hat. How can I be an admiral without my hat? Oh. Holy cow. My cap blew off. How can I be an admiral without my cap? Alright, before we go any further, I'm gonna plug it in. See if it works. sounded like the motor was struggling a little bit so I just took this one off Ugh. and I got my other motor the original Grievous motor and uh, see these little uh, coils yeah they go inside this little track you're gonna want to line up these little nubs right into these grooves right here because this thing spins and it pulls them in both directions you have a feed tube and uh, uh, a slack tube, I guess you would call it. So they go, uh, one goes this way, one goes the other way, and they pull into those tubes. So line up these little coils right, get them into those tubes, and then uh, pop on your new motor. All right, let's see if the old motor does any better. Nope. <laughs> Shit. All right, here's what's going on in here. This little coil moves inside this steel tube. The steel tube should be fastened securely to this bracket, and the moving back and forth of the coil inside it is what pushes the sunroof closed and what pulls it open. The sheath is detached from this bracket, and that's why the glass is not moving anywhere. And that's happening on both sides. It needs the tension of this tube on this bracket in order to push the whole window closed. So I gotta lube the track and make some more friction up here. The friction on this has to be greater than the track so it can push closed. Holy crap. Well, some progress was made. It opened. Now let's see if we can close it. I'm not doing anything but smacking this motor every now and then, and it gives another inch of movement. All right, I've been banging on this stupid plastic box right by the motor this whole time, getting it to work intermittently, so I figured, what the heck, I just unplugged this thing. This goes to the sensor, this goes to the motor, and the other end is the main harness. <laughs> I open this thing up, lo and behold, we got some circuitry here with some solder joints. And I'll be damned that this isn't the same type of solder joints as the XJ window controls. The same era solder has a uh, lead-free solder and it's prone to cracking. Now, these joints look decent, but uh, you never know. 
They could have uh, micro cracks in them. So we're gonna reflow these. So maybe this will actually fix the switch problem. We'll get full power to the sunroof. Then we could clamp on those little window regulator tubes. All right, gonna use some leaded solder. We'll see what happens. Couldn't hurt, right? Damn thing already sucks so bad. Alright, there we go. Not too pretty. Uh, the one thing I noticed was the end of this relay was extremely loose. So maybe that was it. Check this out guys. I zapped in these little tubes with some weld on these brackets right here. Kind of pinch it down, hit it with weld, and then lube this thing. Because I want this thing to have full back pressure, I guess you could call it, to uh, send those tubes right through the front. I also re-soldered these bad solder joints in this thing. So I reflowed them just like the XJ window switch and just like the ZJ VIC. I did those videos a couple years ago. And I just threw a hose clamp on there for good measure. I didn't want that sucker moving at all. Look where we're at. I got this baby to close all the way and furthermore, even got it to open up into the vent position. Now check this out. Closed, vent open, closed, vent open. This works great, but I don't think these motors have enough juice to send it all the way back. So I am not gonna be picky. I'm just gonna call this a win, leaving it in the closed position. If we want, we could get a little vent action going. Come on, don't die on me now. Uh, let me start the Jeep. There we go. With enough juice, we can get some sweet vent action. And I am going to call this a win right here. It closes, it seals. Yeah, that's a win for me right now. All right, at this time, I'm going to use some compressed air and clear out all my drains. All right, once they're blown out, Go ahead and reattach your hoses. You can peel off all that extra paint if you want to. Weird. And I tripled up some zip ties to clamp these on. I probably should have used some hose clamps, but this should do. All right, looks like we got everything chilling where it needs to be. So now let's go spend some time on the headliner. All right, so nothing ruins headliners more than hot, humid summer days and broken AC in your Jeep. You just uh, gotta roll down the windows and uh, and take it, but that makes the uh, the wind buff it and uh, gives a little turbulence up at the top here and combined with the moisture, it will just beat the hell out of your headliner and you get the sagging. So I find that 3M Super 77 is the best adhesive spray to use when reattaching headliner. Uh, normally I would scrub this up and uh, uh, clean this up. Uh, I just do a whole new headliner, but time is of the essence. Uh, this headliner was done about five years ago by my brother. Not bad, Mikey. Um, but hey, nothing lasts forever. So I'm just going to hit it up with some 3M and we're just going to roll it back from whence it came. So he started to venture into the cave from whence they came. Now, when I use 3M, do a nice thick coat. You want to see it uh, start to form those little uh, little bubbles on it. That's how you know you got it on nice and thick. Uh, I do do both sides just to uh, ensure my adhesion. And when you do this, you're gonna want to do it in increments, just so you don't mess it up. You know, you could correct it little by little. And you want to spray this on both sides evenly on the top and the bottom. We'll come around this way. And once you get even coverage, you're going to want to wait till 
until it gets tacky. You want it to you want to see these little strings in your hand. There. That's it. Now once you have it nice and smooth, you want to wait about five minutes for that section you just did. Let it really tack up and then you could go ahead, start peeling back again, right back to the edge of your line and you can see it's getting tacky. So that's where we stopped, right about there. And we're just going to continue the process in about one foot increments till we do the whole thing or as much as required. And that's it. Uh, easy stuff. 3M Super 77. Hey, sponsor me. <laughs> uh, just kidding, but not really. Uh, it's good stuff. So I'm going to continue this. We'll get it in the Jeep. center console is in I got this little piece of trim wrapped around the inside of the sunroof it pinches the headliner and to the frame keeping it nice and tight I'm just gonna go around the interior and button everything up you're gonna want to install these little holders for your visor first because they help hold your visor in place and go and screw it in we'll connect our mirror power just fish up this wire back up into the roof. I'll clip this on here. Now we'll go ahead and pop on our pillar molding. Just two clips. Pop in the light lens. Beautiful. And finally, our rear cargo trim. Uh, make sure you start with your rear cargo light. Don't forget to plug this in. There we go. Line this baby up. Pop in some clips get in these top two screws up here pop in your cargo light lens and the last two trim screws <laughs> don't forget to install these little fasteners up in here hey I think we're done Right. All right, guys. General Grievous is looking great. I'm so happy to finally have a fully functional ZJ. I got a semi-functional sunroof, but it's working the best it's been in years. So on that note, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.